So yesterday, the Texans uniforms leak, leaked on Twitter. I don't think either of us saw the actual photo until the show had ended. Correct. Because first, Joe, there was a leak of somebody standing in what looked like a loading dock. Yes. Wearing a helmet, mm -hmm. jersey, and shoulder pads. However, this person looked comically small, whether it was due to the shoulder pads, his height. I don't know, but everyone saw it and thought to themselves, wait, this is the rebrand? And they looked, it looked bad. Because of who was wearing it. He looked like a Pop Warner football player. Yeah, and also, I, I told Paul this before the show, I, I don't think that that leak is totally inaccurate, though. You did say that. My... What my I, gut instinct was this yeah. is not it. Someone's so, trying to get some clicks. When lights. I worked at when I worked at Lids, one thing I, I learned very quickly is that there's there's two basic jerseys you can buy at like Lids or Academy or one of these places. There's the hundred and fifty dollar jersey, which is the number stitched and it looks closer to the real thing. And then there's the hundred dollar jersey, which is a screen print. The numbers are never the same size, and I think that this jersey that leaked out might be. The cheaper version of what you could buy at the store. Mm. So you're saying this is a rogue Dick Sporting Goods employee. You're you're pointing the finger at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Perhaps. I don't know if they have the jerseys yet. I I was snooping around to see if I could get some photos of the other ones, and they said they don't have them yet. N NFL Team Shop or something. Yeah, I, it just seems like this is the the cheaper version that. My okay. guess is somewhere in the – this is a Texans employee who took this too. Oh, I did enjoy employee. like Titus Howard's. Like they were just I, like, who I, is this guy? The only person that could post that would seemingly be a rogue Texans employee who maybe, yeah. being big brain, had a friend put that on so that he would not face any accountability for his actions yeah. to get a few likes and retweets. But, but the leak happened. So then Kyle McNair on Reddit, obviously, intelligently, I like this move, just posted the real things. Whoever's doing PR for the Texans is doing a fantastic job because I think Cal posting this on Texans Reddit, like, hey, guys, look what I got underneath my trench coat and showing you these jerseys <laughs> with <laughs> Tank Dell and Nico Collins wearing it looked a lot better. It looks a lot better. Now, I think they I, look clean. I, I'm not a fan. I don't like them. Oh, really? I, I think that they should have kept the numbers red I, I or kept the same font that they had on the old numbers. And I also was of the belief that the colors, I guess, were going to get brighter. I don't know why I thought that, though, because I remember when they brought us behind the scenes for the first look at what the uniform might be, they told us, no, we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to put a darker blue out there. It looks like... I'm going to use a Gen Z saying here. It's giving horny Atlanta Falcons. And I say horny because there are horns now on the shoulders. Yeah. And there I, seems to be an H that. logo that we were not quite able to see next to the horns. You know what? Incorporate more horns. I'm a big fan of that. I heard there's another horn that's potentially getting incorporated into a different uniform. But for this one, the away uniforms, the most boring of all the ones that are going to be released from what I understand, I am not the biggest fan of these. Gut feeling these will be the least purchased. Yes. Because this is one of four New Jerseys. They're going to have a red helmet. They're going to have three other color combinations. I thought we were going to get the H-Town Blue incorporated in some of the of each of the jerseys. From, from what I understand, and, and I heard this through somebody who heard it, so, so okay. keep in mind. This is through the grapevine. Through the grapevine with a grapevine adjacent to it. <laughs> the There is one uniform that is going to incorporate the... Um, the as they call it Italian blue, okay, instead of Columbia blue. Uh, okay, Joey Luperfito would love it, right? Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to be more of the same. One of the helmets has an interesting wrinkle, um, that is different than the old Texans logo, and this away uniform is as as Sean says, as as you probably know, Joe, like probably going to be the most boring one that's released. Yeah. But it's cool that they gave us a little sneak peek, you know? It looks like a I I told this to Dell this morning when we talked about it. It looks like someone could have made this jersey in Madden and not in the last 24 <laughs> hours, but in the last 20 years of Madden. Yeah, <laughs> or, I, I see that. It's like just it is very similar to their current road uh, or the road white uniforms, except numbers change the color, 
a little bit different of a font, and really you just are rotating the stripe to look more like a horn. It's yeah. like not even really that much different. I I was a little disappointed because like I think Paul, you were the one that told me this, so I think we both were just kind of like feeding each other bad information. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that I thought they were also going to go away from deep steel blue and go with a lighter, you know, more blue kind of blue. On, in addition to the uh, H-Town blue that, that they've teased. But now it's midnight blue. Uh, oh. I don't like that. I, I like deep steel blue as, yeah, the, as the, I know. the brand. Folks hardworking. But yeah. it's maybe like the, 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 the... So is it not Liberty White anymore? I think it's still Liberty White and Battle yeah. Red and, and deep steel blue, but it's a deeper steel blue. They, they just changed deep steel blue? They they made deep steel blue deeper and bluer. They're going deeper. Actually, more, I guess, deeper. blacker? I don't know. Yeah, it was a blacker bl- version of blue. I, I don't know, I, just darker blue, I guess. Okay, so <laughs> let's look close to black. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, what? I, I I like these first ones. I'm curious what the other I three care. will look like. I my guess is they all will leak, besides the H Town blue one before I, April 23rd. I think this might have been a strategic leak. They, I, I, yes, they knew they were getting crushed on social media. Uh, exactly. That's why they did it. And to have Cal do it again, whoever's doing the Texas PR is doing yeah. a good job. Well, I think they also got lucky. That was quick. the worst jersey that got leaked first. Yeah. Because now it's gonna. Like they're gonna take the hit, or not really hit, because I don't think anyone is like. Well, no, people are definitely trashing this because people will trash anything. Yes, but I think for us, this is the one where we're just kind of like, eh, all right. But the I, again, this is pure speculation. I imagine the more dra- drastic changes are coming with the three remaining ones that we haven't seen, mm-hmm. and so that that adds a level of like kind of build up to uh, April 23rd when they're going to announce them. Uh, so the other thing that's kind of was, was out there today, Sheldon Rankins did a, uh, an interview after he signed with the Cincinnati Bengals, and he, he gave us a surprising little quote here. He said uh, when he was asked about you know going to Cincinnati and, and why he, he likes the idea of being a Bengal, he said, quote, stability, a place that wants me as not part, not just part of the next six-month plan, but of the future and a team that wants to win to really win it all. Uh, the, the first part of this, the six month plan, that doesn't surprise me. That's Robo Casario, one to two year plan, not long term guys. He's not going to keep them here. He's not going to sugarcoat it. If you're not part of the future of this team and wants to give you a three, four year contract like he would do to Nico Collins or Will Anderson, CJ Stroud, and those guys, I don't think he's going to sugarcoat you. And some guys won't take that well. It sounds like Rankins is not. I, I think he, there's some sour feelings here. Yeah. I bet being a part of this in year one, you're excited to potentially go back for a second year. But, I mean, that is who Sheldon Rankins at, is at this point in his career. This is not a guy that you're looking at as a long-term answer on your defensive line. You want him as long as he's good, but you also are of the mindset that the, the cliff is coming. So I can understand having comments that could be interpreted as shots against the Houston Texans. Because, yeah, of course there's going to be some sour feelings. I bet he thought he was going to end up coming back here, especially if you take a look at the defensive line depth or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to get a long-term deal. I guess the Bengals were willing to give him that. And we'll see how he does there. Uh, To his credit, I mean, he is on a team that has been to a Super Bowl recently and can more seriously say we are a Super Bowl contender because of that. It could change next year. Texans could be better. They could elevate themselves to the top tier of the AFC. But where we're at right now, what Sheldon Rankin said, it's not all that wrong. And it is a bit of a shot, but it's not a massive shot. The second part is really what just surprises me that he would even say this. The the idea, just to say that he's now part of a team that wants to win, to really win it all. I don't I don't know if that's a shot. That's a little salty. It, because that's, that's, we're watching all with our eyes and watching Cal McNair's pocketbook empty with players the Texans are clearly trying to win, maybe in a way that they shouldn't be. Maybe being more patient and still building and not trying to go from a 10-win team to a you know AFC Championship game team in year two would be the smarter play. But they're clearly, so clearly, putting their foot on the gas and trying to accelerate this. Thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I mean, if they had stood pat in free agency or done what, ironically, the Bengals have done in the past, yeah, they would be getting crushed if there wasn't a Daniil Hunter move or... Uh, 
a Autry move or some of the other things that we've seen go down. So it's interesting to see Rankins react this way. But I imagine Rankins to to defend him a little bit, to play devil's advocate, he thinks to himself, oh, well, if a team wants to win a Super Bowl, they're going to sign me. That's fair. That, that's and definitely fair. The Texans aren't doing that, so I mean, this team's serious. I yeah, mean, that's that's these are the things you tell yourself. These are the chips that athletes put on their shoulders. Yeah, and there's just something about Cincinnati Bengals and bringing in defensive tackles that the Texans don't want anymore. They did with DJ Reader. DJ Reader was very good for them. Yeah, and I think, do you like the Reader going to the Lions more, or Rankins going to the Bengals more? Reader to the Lions. Reader so too. Him next to Aiden Hutchinson should be nasty. Mm. I'm, I'm very curious about the Detroit Lions next year. The more I think about the NFC, the more confused I am about who's going to be good in that conference. Yeah. Because it's just, I don't... Why don't you buy into the Lions? I hate them. <laughs> Why do you hate, hate them? You know what? I don't hate them. I don't yeah, hate you don't... Lions. I thought you, I figured you wouldn't care about them. They're, they are probably to you right now, the I'm Bills just, were to me. Like, right now, I, I didn't think about them. <laughs> yeah, jealous is... Right the, now, I'm jealous. I think Normally, that, I feel that's nothing. That's what it really is, this jealous, especially yeah. the way they do it, too. Yeah, and honestly, most of, most of my disdain for the Lions is more just as a football fan... When they were so bad, and we had to watch them on Thanksgiving every year, and it was just like, yeah, can we, but can we put other teams on? Oh, like the Bears had multiple primetime games every year. I'm with you guys on that. <laughs> I I support that. I support that message too. Take the Bears off primetime. I, I am with you though with the Lions. It, it's it was. I mean, even this year, when the Lions are good, they still got their asses kicked. Yeah. On, uh, the first game on on Thanksgiving. 